So it's almost nearly quarter past two p.m. We are the Code Dive 2022. Once again, welcome, especially all of all those of you so who decided to join us today online for the ninth time, hopefully, because uh, my statistics tell me right here on my page that this is the ninth time that we can meet inside the interiors uh, of uh, New Horizon Cinema. Maybe not for the ninth time right here, but definitely Code Dive is present and I would say even recognizable all over the world. Uh, the best proof for that, most likely, so many different lecturers, so many different people interested in coding and programming coming to Wrocław, coming to the Nokia place, because uh, I will repeat it once again, this is sponsored by Nokia and I think this should somehow go uh, across the world. So welcome back and hopefully more people will be joining us today right here as well inside the room number nine. Let me just give a quick reminder only that uh, room number eight is still available for those of you who still did not try their hands in, in playing those games. You can win very nice gifts from uh, Code Dive, so it's worth trying. Please remember about Nintendo that you can win. Please remember about the books that you can uh, also check by Pevuen, by Hellion, especially prepared by our partners for uh, today. So we are coming back to the gist, actually, of uh, our sessions where we are discussing the very precise topics. And I think this will be again the case. So custom metrics with Push, Gateway, Prometheus and Grafana. It sounds once again Greek to me, but I know, I know that you, you specialize in that. And Krzysztof, who is with us, is actually a physicist, but he chose to work in IT because of, well, bigger opportunities uh, and of, you know, like of self-development above all. So he tries everything by himself, sometimes causing more harm than good. We'll see today. So his motto is don't reinvent, reuse what is already available. We've got screens, we've got microphones, we have computers. Please, Krzysztof, reuse it. Krzysztof Olszewski, <laughs> please give a warm applause to Krzysztof. Thank you. I'm glad to see you here. Uh, my name is Krzysztof. I'm working uh, for the Nokia company. Uh, I'm a software uh, developer, although I'm a, a DevOps engineer. Uh, I'm working for Nokia for five years. Uh, right now, uh, I am a technical uh, leader in the 5G continuous integration team. Uh, today's presentation uh, will take around uh, 30 minutes. Um, there will be some time for the questions after the presentation. And the presentation is a rough overview of uh, uh, data collection, data gathering, so the metrics about the data visualization and the tools which can be used uh, to achieve this. Yes? So the Prometheus, Grafana, Push Gateway and the Node uh, Exporter. Uh, this presentation is based on the Ubuntu uh, 22.04 with a working Docker environment. So I will not talk about Docker here. I will just uh, assume that the Docker on your machine is working. So you will be able to follow all the steps which are in this presentation. And the story why I've made this presentation. Uh, because uh, some time ago, we have a problem with one of uh, our services, a critical one, and it wasn't performing pretty well. So I had to monitor this service and uh, we had a thousands of hosts and those hosts were connecting to the service so i wanted to know where is the problem yes it's in the network on the network side or it's the problem with the service itself so i wanted to uh, query the service uh, very often uh, and uh, i wanted to do this randomly from the host which uh, which we have uh, because when I w would be uh, uh, querying this service from the, all the host, I will kill this service. So I was randomly choosing uh, one of the thousands of hosts, which will uh, query the service, uh, make some metrics uh, on this, and then provide this to our infrastructure. As we already had a Prometheus and a Grafana in our infrastructure, so I didn't want to reinvent, so I wanted to use those tools. And uh, this story begins here. So I wanted to have a service which will uh, gather the metrics and visualize it to the, uh, to the users. Uh, so what, what are the metrics? The metrics are uh, just the numbers describing a state of something. So this could be 
uh, sensors or a battery level. So how many of you have this device? Okay, I believe all of you, yes. <laughs> so this device is producing a very big amount of data, especially a metric. So this could be a proximity sensor, for example, uh, the acceleration sensors, uh, the uh, uh, light sensors, or the battery level sensors. So lots of data which is usually lost because we are not monitoring this, and this is uh, usually lost. But keep in mind that this device produces lots of uh, metrics. And uh, also the metrics could be, for example, uh, population, yes? It's also a number describing uh, how many people are living in the country or in the world. Or the metrics could be also a uh, price, for example, price of God. We also have a price in a specific time, yes? And we would like to uh, keep this in uh, our data structure so uh, that this will be uh, very easily accessible. So in our case, it would be a time series um, database that Prometheus use it, uses it, this. And those are just uh, metrics over the time. So we have a value and we have a timestamp for this. Uh, it's very simple, yes? And in our case, um, this uh, whole service is working in a pool mode. So we have a service uh, metrics provider and we have a service which is connecting to this metrics provider and is pulling the data. So right now, let's have a big picture uh, what I will be talking about. So on, on the center here, we have a Prometheus server. Uh, it's a, a regular web server, I could say, with a, a time series database, as you can see here. Uh, the data is stored on the HDD, yes, so on the drive. It also has the HTTP server, which is serving the API and is serving also the uh, Prometheus web UI, so you can see here. Uh, and also there is a retrieval module. This module is uh, uh, collecting the metrics from the target, but uh, one additional thing which is able to do is the service discovery. So here you can see that, for example, it, it's able to connect to Kubernetes and uh, get, the, uh, get, the, get the data about the, uh, uh, about the uh, uh, Docker hosts and so on. In our case, uh, we are using uh, OpenStack a cloud provider. So this module is connecting to the OpenStack. Then it gets the list of all the hosts which we have. And then it's pulling the data here from all, all the hosts. Uh, so this is uh, something uh, like this, that uh, yeah, we have a Prometheus, and it's pulling the metrics uh, from, from our target. Additionally, uh, we have a push gateway. This is uh, an addition to the Prometheus, because as I said, Prometheus is working in the uh, pool mode, so it is uh, connecting to the targets and getting, uh, gathering data from them. Uh, but, so we are not able really to push the metrics to the Prometheus, so we have uh, another service which is called Push Gateway. I will be talking about this uh, later on my presentation. Also, we have an alert manager here, so the Prometheus can send uh, alerts to alert manager, and then alert manager can send this, for example, to the pager duty, to the email, Teams, Slack, or whatever. But I will not talk here about the alert manager because alert manager is uh, pretty complicated uh, to configure and uh, to use it. And the functionality of Alert Manager uh, is uh, also inside the Grafana. And in Grafana, we can just click and uh, we could have the same type of alerts with the notifications and so on. So I will not talk about the Alert Manager, uh, but I will talk about the Grafana. So that, that's the big picture, how the infrastructure uh, looks like. Okay, so uh, to have uh, some starting point for the Prometheus, uh, I have to have uh, some uh, metrics uh, provider, yes? So uh, here, as an example, I will use a, a node exporter. A node exporter is an application which is uh, running on the host, on the servers, and it's collecting uh, the data and it's uh, providing this exposing to the Prometheus. It can be run as a system D, system D service, uh, but in my presentation I will show you that this is just an application, so uh, just, I will run just a binary. And this is uh, the only uh, component which is uh, run natively, not in, the, in, in Docker, 
uh, because it needs uh, an access to the system, to the, let's say, low-level properties of the system, and Docker is not recommended here. Uh, we can use a Docker with some additional parameters, but uh, I will stick to only to the native version. And what is uh, doing uh, Node Exporter? So as an application, it is running on the, on the server, and it uh, can collect data uh, with configured collectors. So one of the collectors could be CPU. So it will gather all the data about the CPU and provide the metrics to the Prometheus. Also, there is a disk start or hardware monitor or, for example, load average. Uh, but what is most interesting he here, in my case, is the text file. So we can put the metrics into the text file and say to the collector, please expose those metrics to Prometheus. And it will be exposing those metrics. So back to my story, this could be a, one of the solutions. So I can run a script on one of, of the thousands of hosts and put the metrics there to the text file, and this will be, let's say, emitted to the Prometheus. But the problem here is that when I uh, execute the job, and then uh, I will execute job uh, on another host, uh, the, mm, the text file on the first execution will live there forever and the node exporter will be exporting all the time the old data. So this is uh, not a pretty good solution here because I have to write some uh, workarounds, uh, some scripts which will uh, uh, look into the text file if it's written or not and so on. I don't uh, like doing such a things. I'm a lazy person. So I was looking further how to, how to do this. So let's continue the presentation here. And when the, the node exporter is running, it's exposing the metrics uh, under the uh, specified port on the slash metrics uh, endpoint. So how to uh, install it? Uh, this is the, I could say, most tricky part of my presentation. Uh, so I will show you this uh, as a live demo. Uh, how to do this. It's uh, just three uh, simple steps. So you have to download the sources, unpack it, and then run it. So I will try to do this, and hopefully it will work. So I have it here. So let's, let's get the data. OK, so the internet connection is not so good right now. Sorry for that. Uh, I will connect once again. And hopefully this time it will work. OK, uh, so uh, I will copy uh, the comments right now. OK, so the connection is really poor right now. Yeah. OK. Too much, too much. OK, it downloaded right now. That, that's great. Uh, Right now, let's uh, let's unpack it. Okay, it's already unpacked. Uh, right now, I will uh, run it. Okay, so you you see that uh, it is listening right now, so it is working. Uh, just to be sure, uh, I will check here if it's uh, working properly. So I will show you the exposed metrics. OK, so you see that right now the node exporter is, is running. Uh, it is exposing the, the metrics. But right now, we do not have a Prometheus uh, yet. So uh, this is only exposing, and nothing is, is going on. So let's, let's back to the presentation uh, right now. You see that the, the node exporter is working, so uh, it is good. And uh, here is a, a sample metrics. 
Uh, I will not talk about the, the metrics, uh, how, what are the types and so on, uh, just to show you that uh, at least there are two types. One is the counter. The counter is the number which is only increasing. So for example, it could be uh, uptime, let's say, of, of the system, so it's on, only increasing. And the second uh, type of metric is a gauge, uh, so it is uh, taking, let's say, any value. A uh, good example is a battery level, so it's between 0 and 100%. Uh, and now, going to uh, Prometheus, uh, we have to, before we run it, we have to have a configuration file. That's why I uh, showed you the node exporter, just to have uh, some examples. Uh, to be able to show you. So the configuration of the Prometheus is done through the YAML file. Here is the example of the uh, YAML file. Uh, so shortly describing this, uh, the, the scrap interval here is the 15 seconds, so it means that every 15 seconds Prometheus will connect to the target and will gather the, the data. And it's doing this every 15 seconds. Uh, there is also the scrape config. Uh, right now, it's uh, only a static config. So it will connect to the local host. It's just an example. I will use an ARP because Prometheus is working inside the Docker. When I leave the local host, it will just not work. So I have to provide the IP. So in this case, Prometheus will, uh, will connect to the target every 15 seconds, and it will get the metrics from there. Let's try, try to do this. Yes, so I will create the file. OK, let's, oh, I will open another session, sorry. Let's hope it will work. OK, it looks that it is working. Uh, right now, I, I will create a directory, working directory for Prometheus. And then I will create this, uh, this file, uh, YAML configuration file. I will copy the content uh, of this uh, example. Okay, you see th this is the, the same data as in the example. The only difference is the IP of the of the host. So I will write it and uh, we'll go back to the presentation. So right now I I have a. Uh, this uh, configuration file, so I'll be able to, to start the Prometheus. And uh, Prometheus installation, it's called installation, but it's not really an installation because yeah, we are running in Docker, so uh, it's just a, a running of the Prometheus. And Prometheus can run uh, as a native application and also can run in a Docker container. Here, I will show you the Docker container because it's, it is much easier. As you can see, this is a regular Docker command, so docker run. Here we have a, this uh, Prometheus uh, image, which we would like to run. And there are two, two options provided to the Docker. So the first one is the minus P, which is a port binding. So we are binding the uh, port from inside to outside so that uh, uh, the Prometheus will be available on, on this port, uh, on our IP. And also we are mounting the volume, so the directory which I just created so that the uh, Prometheus will store the data there and also we will read the uh, configuration file uh, from this location. Okay, so right now I will try to, to run it. Hopefully it will work. So just to copy. Okay, so right now you see that uh, the server is ready to receive requests. So let's see this uh, on the web UI if it's really working. Yes, so as you can see, the Prometheus is uh, right now working. 
So we can see the web UI, just to be sure that uh, our uh, target is configured properly. So I can go here and targets. And right now, our target is on the list. It's green, so it's up. So it means that Prometheus is able to gather the data from, uh, from this target. So pretty easy for right now, yes? OK, so let's go next. Uh, here is a, another example of the, of the metrics. I just wanted to show you uh, how does this work. And as you can see, yeah, it's not really convenient, yes? So uh, here we can see some, some graphs. It, in this case, it, this is the uh, node load, one minute load. So it is showing us the load on the node. And if you would like to compare it with some other metrics, uh, do some stuff on this, it's not pretty convenient. Yes? It's just a basic. Also, the data in the tables is just the data. It is not showing as much. I'm using this only when I uh, have a problems with uh, Grafana, that some metrics are not working there. So I'm not sure if it's a problem with Grafana, with the query, or with the Prometheus. So only then I'm using the, this graph. And uh, also, I would like to show you uh, the alerting mechanism for the uh, last time. Uh, this, uh, this alerting uh, is uh, defined by the expressions. So here you can see that in this case, the, the node load uh, one minute is greater uh, or equal than uh, 99. And if this lasts for 20 minutes, then uh, Prometheus will send an alert that um, there is something wrong. And the uh, alert manager will receive it and then mm, what to do with it. Yes, we'll decide what to do. OK, so right now, uh, when we have uh, the Prometheus working, so we have a data, uh, we have a note exporter, and so on, we would like to visualize this data. And a few words uh, about the data visualization. Why we visualize the data? Uh, because when, when we are looking on the data, it's much easier to identify the patterns if there are any. For example, if you are looking uh, on the servers and we see that during the weekend load is uh, lower, yeah, it's, it's a pattern. Yeah? So every weekend we can see maybe uh, if you are using some cloud providers, then uh, during the weekends, uh, it's not necessary to pay for the service, so we can uh, just take them down. Uh, also, we can see the easily the trends. It's very useful when you are a trader and you are looking on the graph and see oh, what to buy, what to sell, and so on. So you see the trends, the long-term long trends, so short-term trends, so you can make a decision based on this. Uh, we can also see the relations between uh, other metrics. And it's very easy to see the state of our system. So as an example here, uh, you have uh, the COVID cases. It's a pretty good example. Uh, because when you are looking at this, you already know what's going on. Yes, so that uh, where, where is the uh, most COVID cases on the world, on the USA, and what is the current status. So uh, when I'm uh, going back uh, or to work on Monday, and uh, when I'm looking on the, on the graph, on the visualization, I already know uh, what, how the day will look like. Yes? If there is a lot of red, yeah, there will be lots of work, yes. But usually everything is green, and I can just drink a coffee. And maybe a short uh, story here. Uh, when I was starting uh, my journey with uh, big data a long, long time ago, uh, there weren't many tools to visualize it. So I was digging in the, uh, on the internet uh, how to visualize the data, what tools can be used. And I found one pretty good article which was visualizing the data about the UFO sightings. I'm not talking about the alien en encounters, but UFO sightings. And the graphs were pretty good. Yeah, it was uh, 10 years ago. So I was digging uh, there, and uh, I saw that there are some specific patterns, that uh, the most of the UFO uh, sightings were during the weekends after the uh, yeah, uh, Midnight, I could say, when people are drunk, yes. So there were also the pattern that uh, during the, some concert or some uh, other events when, where there were fire, fireworks, there also was uh, more UFO, UFO sightings. But unfortunately, I couldn't find this article. Uh, it was more than 10 years ago. So I was looking into this uh, once again. 
I, maybe I will show you this, uh, I thought, in that time. But I couldn't find this article. I found another one, the rec re recent one. And uh, there was uh, some, uh, something uh, very funny for me. Because when I was digging into the data, uh, I saw that there are two states in the United States where the trend is uh, really growing. Yes, so the California and the Washington. Every state has almost the same average, but two states have really growing trend. And it uh, was happening since a few years. And I was wondering, why this is happening? And then I realized that the, both states legalized marijuana a few years back, yes. OK, but uh, going back to my uh, presentation, uh, Grafana. Uh, what is a Grafana? As I told you before, Grafana is a, a tool, a web-based tool, which uh, can work with uh, many data sources and visualize the, this data to us. So we, we will be uh, more convenient uh, to look on this and uh, uh, yeah, see the patterns and, and so on. Uh, also, Grafana has this uh, alerting mechanism. Uh, which I told you already, it is much better than the alert manager because you just have to click, provide some uh, basic info, and that's it, everything will work. Uh, Grafana functionality can be easily extended with the plugins, so you can write your own plugin. If there is a functionality not covered by the Grafana, you can write it by your own. Grafana is made by the same people who uh, are making the uh, Prometheus. It's open source as the Prometheus, so you can freely use it. And uh, there is uh, much more in the Grafana, so like uh, user management, for example. And there is uh, one really uh, good feature. It's uh, called Loki. It's a log browser. Uh, it's uh, pretty complicated, but you can browse logs from uh, thousands of hosts just uh, with uh, one comment. Maybe if you will like my presentation today, I will make uh, another one about the Loki next year. Okay, so how to run the Grafana? Again, it's not installation, it's just the running. So uh, we will use uh, Docker once again. Uh, uh, as I told you before, I will uh, 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 use the port 3000 here. This is the image which I will be using. This is an uh, open source image. There is also an, an enterprise, but uh, I will stick to the uh, open source right now. And there is uh, one additional comment here. It's called uh, minus D, which means uh, detach mode. So this is uh, like a fire and forget service. Yeah? So I will just run it once, and I will forget uh, about this because it will not require any additional configuration in the files and so on. Everything could be done in the UI. And for the first login, here you have uh, the uh, default uh, username and the password. Right now, I will try to, to run it so that you will see that this is really easy. Uh, let, let me open one more session. OK, so you can see that it is uh, right now really running. It's provided as the hash of the, uh, of the container, yes. And to be sure that it is running, I will connect to this port uh, on this host. Yep, it is running. For the first time, I need to change the password, so I will change it for something uh, really simple. And that's it. Grafana is running right now. Yes. So we have a node exporter, we have a Prometheus, we have a Grafana, but we do not have a connection between the Grafana and the Prometheus. So uh, right now, I will show you how, how to do this. Uh, it's also uh, pretty easy, I could say, yes. So let's go back to the presentation. So you just, we just have to go to the configuration, data sources, add data source, and provide the IP address of the server uh, where, the, where the Prometheus is running and the port. So right now, I will show you how to do this. So let's go back to the Grafana. So go to the data sources, add data source, choose the Prometheus, 
And uh, here is, a, uh, as a suggestion, a local host. But as I told you uh, before, uh, it will not work because it's inside the Docker. So I have to um, provide the IP. Sorry. I'm very sorry, I'm not able to see this on the, my screen. So I just have to click save and test. Oh, some errors, probably with the protocol. Okay, so right now, Prometheus is connected to the, uh, to the Grafana. And I will show you uh, one more thing uh, when I'm here. Uh, I will go to the uh, Grafana. Uh, Grafana is, uh, as I said, is an open source. Um, there is a really big commu community. And here is a, let's say, dashboard made by the uh, Grafana people. And uh, I will uh, just copy it right now. This is for the node exporter, the application in which I'm using to expose the metrics. So here uh, I will just uh, download, download the JSON because the configuration of the uh, Grafana is done through the uh, JSON files. So I will just copy the JSON. Then I will go to the, back to the Grafana. So let's go here to the dashboard, uh, new dashboard. I will go to the settings because I would like to paste this uh, JSON file. So I'm going to the JSON model. Here is some uh, default JSON, but uh, I will paste mine, just which I just took from the uh, Grafana. And okay, I save it. Right now I'm able to browse and you can see that the da dashboard is here. And it is uh, right now showing us the data from the node exporter. So it is taking from the node exporter to Prometheus, then from Prometheus to Grafana. And right now we can see this. So there are lots of metrics which are gathered uh, by the node exporter. So I will not talk about all of them, but you can see that it is monitoring the CPU, memory, disk, network, or whatever. It's monitoring. Uh, the whole node. For me, as a uh, DevOps, uh, it's uh, really convenient uh, to use this tool, yes? So this is just an uh, example. There is uh, lots of dashboards, lots of uh, data providers, lots of, uh, uh, lo lots of uh, free dashboards, let's say, yes? Okay, so this is uh, the example in case that the network will be here pure, poor, so uh, just to show you. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, the push gateway. Uh, why push gateway? Uh, we didn't have it in uh, our infrastructure before, but uh, going back to my history, uh, when I was trying to monitor the critical service, I found out that the push gateway uh, can be used for this, yes? So what is a push gateway? Push gateway is uh, another metrics provider. Uh, which is uh, providing the metrics for the Prometheus, of course, and we can send the metrics to the push gateway itself. So uh, in uh, our case, it changes the mode in which Prometheus is working from the uh, pull mode to the push mode. So I am able to push the metrics to the push gateway and then Prometheus will gather those metrics from the push gateway. So for me, um, this was the perfect solution, yes, yeah? because I have a script which is running randomly on one of the thousand hosts. It uh, executes, gathers some metrics, and then sends this metrics to the push gateway, and the script dies, and there is uh, no sign uh, on the on the host uh, after this uh, this job, and the metrics uh, are in the push gateway. So the Prometheus is able to uh, to take take those metrics and keep it in its internal database. Uh, this uh, push gateway was designed to uh, serve uh, for the, uh, let's say, uh, scripts which uh, are 
not live enough to be scrubbed by the Prometheus. You saw that I sh show you um, this 15 seconds uh, scrub time, yes? But uh, it can be that uh, Prometheus is scrubbing for every one minute or five minutes, and we have a job which is exposing the, the metrics, but it, it is not uh, living long enough that the Prometheus will be able to, to scrap it, so that's why the guys from the Prometheus uh, designed this push gateway. But, uh, but as I already told you, I was using this uh, a bit different way so that I'm able to uh, push those metrics from uh, anywhere, yes? And that's why uh, I came to this presentation, yes, that you, you will be able to send the custom metrics to the push gateway, then it will be gathered by the Prometheus, and you will be able to visualize it in, in the Grafana. Okay, so let's uh, right now try to uh, run the Prometheus uh, push gateway. Uh, I will re use uh, once again the, the Docker here because it's the most easy and convenient way. Uh, so let, let me try to run it. Okay, right now we see that the cont container is running, so let's go and see if it's really available. Okay, so right now you see that the push gateway is, uh, is already running. There is uh, no data because I didn't send anything there, but yeah, we can see the status of it. Uh, it is working uh, and running uh, just fine right now. So we have a complete setup here, so we have a, the uh, metrics uh, provider as a push gateway, but right now it is not connected to the Prometheus because Prometheus right now is scrapping only the information for the node exporter. So what we have to do is to uh, to add this as a target to the Prometheus. So I will uh, once again uh, go back to the uh, Prometheus and I will add uh, those lines there for to the configuration file. Uh, Okay, so here we see the node exporter is running, and here is the Prometheus. I, f I didn't uh, run it in the detached mode, just because, yes, I wanted to stop it uh, right now. Come on, please stop it. Again, pure internet connection. Okay, maybe in the meantime I will, oh, it stopped by, by itself, okay. So I will open another session to the server. Okay, before I write, uh, I will maybe uh, shortly talk about uh, what is here. So we have uh, another job name. Yes, so this was the node exporter. Here we have uh, the push gateway. Uh, honor timestamps, uh, this is set to true. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, when I'm pushing the metrics uh, to the push gateway, they have this uh, timestamp. But when Prometheus is uh, gathering the data, it, it puts the timestamp when uh, the data was really gathered by the Prometheus, not when the um, data was sent. So here I wanted to keep that original timestamp when I send the data to the push gateway. And of course we have a target here, so the same IP with a different port, the port on which the push gateway is working. And uh, just the label uh, so that uh, mm, when I'm getting the data, there will be said that this is from the push gateway instance. So right now I will save it and uh, I will run once again uh, Prometheus.
and this time I will run it in detached mode. So I'm done with the configuration right now. Okay, uh, I see a problem that port is already are located. Okay, so we can see that the Prometheus is working. So let's go back to the uh, web UI and see if it's uh, really, uh, and it has this target. Okay, so <coughs> right now uh, we, s we have uh, two endpoints. The one is the push gateway. Uh, right now it is uh, in unknown state. Uh, let's see if it's refreshes. Okay, so it's up. It just needed some time to scrap the metrics. And uh, we have uh, metrics uh, mm, from the uh, push gateway here. So uh, let's say we have uh, the whole setup. So we have uh, the uh, push gateway. Uh, we have a Prometheus. We have a Grafana. And uh, everything uh, right now is connected to each other. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, how to uh, send the, the data. Uh, it is uh, pretty easy. We just need to uh, use the uh, post uh, and post to the, uh, to the uh, push gateway. So I will uh, run it uh, right now. I will send uh, some metrics to the uh, push gateway and see if it's uh, working. Okay, I've sent it. Let's right now see in the push gateway if it received this. Okay, so uh, there is uh, some problem with it. I'm not sure what's wrong. Okay, so right now uh, we see that the metrics were received by the uh, push gateway. So uh, we, we have some information that the type is untyped because I didn't provide the type uh, in the helper. And uh, when, when the data uh, was pushed, yes, so we see that the push gateway received this data. Uh, and right now we can go to the Grafana and see if, if those uh, metrics are available there. So I will go once again here, uh, create some uh, new dashboard, uh, maybe discard this one. It's a new dashboard, new panel. And here I will put my metrics. Last five minutes. And you can see that the metrics is here. You can right now do uh, whatever you want uh, with it. So it's uh, available, it's connected. And as you could see, this was a pretty easy task yes, to achieve. So uh, right now, here's a, in case that it will not work. So I'm just showing that the data is available here. And to going shortly to the end uh, of my presentation, I would like to share with you uh, my three key messages. So gather the data, visualize the data, and use tools which were designed for this. 
And that's it. I hope <laughs> you are well right now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sister. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions that you would like to ask about the gathering, visualizing, or using tools, actually? Uh, so Christoph really did a good job to explain that in details to us so that we understand all the ins and outs. Actually, I do have a question. Yeah. Is it a tool that can be used, for example, for someone with diabetes and we could measure, for example, uh, you know, like the values from someone's sensor and, and uh, visualize of course. it? Of course, yes, yes. But you, you will have to uh, use uh, one of the existing uh, uh, the collectors, mm -hmm. there are lots of them, so for sure uh, there will be, if you have uh, some uh, device, for sure there, there is an exporter for this, but if not, then you can write your own exporter, mm -hmm. or you can use this uh, push gateway, so just a script which will be sending data to the push gateway, then to the primitives. Okay, okay, just very useful for me as well, thank you very much. Okay, so once again, big applause for our uh, presenter, Krzysztof Olszewski. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.